Depression is an illness. It's not a weakness or some fault of your own. That's what I'm gonna be talking about today. Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist. And if you're new to this channel, I talk about mental health and self-improvement. And if that interests you, click subscribe. It pains me to see people come to my office and start to tell me about their depression symptoms and say that they just feel so weak or they feel like they failed. Worse yet, they have other people telling them, you just need to get it together. In fact, you might be thinking that yourself, of why can't I pull it together? I don't have a reason to be depressed. Well, right, you don't have to have a reason to feel depressed any more than you don't have to have a reason to have diabetes or high blood pressure. I use those two illnesses because they're, they're similar in the sense that they both have a biological process that goes on, but there's still external factors that can affect them. So, for example, um, if you're borderline diabetic or borderline high blood pressure, you may be told to lose weight or cut back on your salt, and then maybe you don't need medication. And that might work for a while, it might work indefinitely, but eventually at some point, you still may develop the disorder. And no one's gonna fault you, or most people probably are not gonna say, you just need it to pull it together or else you wouldn't have gotten that high blood pressure. Some people, it doesn't even matter. Genetically, they're predisposed to it. Similarly with depression, there's a genetic component that makes people more at risk of developing depression if they have a, a relative with it. And similarly, there's environmental factors that may influence them getting depressed or even trigger an episode. But even in the absence of any kind of trigger, you can still develop depression at the height of your career, at the top of your life, everything's going perfectly, and you drop into a depression. So why does this happen? The term that probably has become cliche at this point as chemical imbalance. Well, unfortunately, even though that's overused, it's true. The main three brain chemicals that affect your mood are norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine. Those are the three brain chemicals that have been associated with mood. And that is why medications target these chemicals. So what happens is you have drops in your levels of serotonin, norepinephrine and or dopamine. And when this happens, you have changes in your brain. Remember, your brain is an organ just like your liver and your kidneys. So if your kidneys malfunction, you're gonna have trouble with your blood pressure. Well, your brain controls pretty much everything. It's, it's your central processing unit. So if the part of my brain that controls, say, the left side of my body, my motor movement, my ability to lift my arm like this, then if I, say, have a stroke and that's not functioning properly, that part of my brain, then I'm either I'm going to have weakness or I might even be paralyzed on this, on this left side. But what if the part of the brain that is not functioning correctly is the part that controls your emotions? Because your emotions are controlled by your brain, as is everything in your body. Well, if that's not functioning properly, then you're gonna have poor emotional regulation. Makes sense. But I think when it comes to emotions, we just, it's hard to wrap your mind around, and no pun intended, the fact that your brain controls everything and that so things that are emotional are also um, also come from an organ that has to function correctly. And we're human beings and our bodies don't always function correctly. I think where it gets harder to buy in, if you will, to the idea that depression is a, is a medical illness is in how we can have days where let's just say you're in a funk or you feel sad and or something bad happens you uh, lose your job or you fail a test and you feel bad for a day or two and people will say i'm depressed and it's hard to separate that or see the difference between that and the actual illness of depression the last thing i want to talk about is how long does depression last now it used to be, and I used to say this all the time, based on uh, prior editions of our diagnostic manual, that 
a typical episode was about nine months. Um, I did some reading to catch up to make sure I'm still current with this video and saw that now I see numbers like five to six months. Regardless, it's several months. This is not something that just lasts a couple weeks, couple months, and then it's gone. However, some people can start to, so the five to six months is either with or without treatment. So if you did nothing, you could be depressed for five months and then start to, and just kind of get better on your own. That's not a great idea though, because there's this concept called the kindling effect, kind of like kindling with firewood, where the more depressive episodes that your brain experiences with no resolution, the more, the more likely you are to have future episodes and episodes that are worse. Some people can develop chronic depression where their symptoms last as much as two years or more. So they don't really have a nice period of remission. They just kind of stay in this low state of either really, really depressed or not that bad, but still a little depressed. If you get depressed, will it come back? Well, the answer is probably. So the newer literature says that if someone, once someone recovers from a depressive episode, you have a 50% chance of having another one within a year. And then you have an 85% chance of having another one at some point in your life. It could be five years from now, it could be 20 years from now. Of course, the longer you go without, the greater or the less likely that you'll have another episode. But there are some people who maybe every year or every couple of years um, can just keep having episodes. So the moral of that story is that it is a recurring illness. It's not something that gets cured per se. You could be in the minority of people who have an episode and it never comes back ever again and wonderful if that's your case. If it's not, you're in the majority of people and there are millions of people who have depression and you just don't know it because they don't want to talk about it. That's a whole nother video. At any rate, it is a recurring illness and it can be treated. And in fact, it's better for it to be treated properly because of the kindling effect and the greater chance of having episodes if you go untreated for long periods of time. Next time, I'm gonna talk about the symptoms of depression. How can you tell if you're depressed? Yes, we have a list, but sometimes they don't always look exactly like that list. In fact, um, depression isn't always sadness. Sometimes it's anger. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.